welcome back to another month um, of our library workshop. Uh, today is, is the craft for the month of November, and although we have passed on past uh, Halloween, we're still kind of in the season of Thanksgiving and getting together with family, so we're going to do a focus on the pumpkin this time around, um, where we did Day of the Dead for our, our Halloween. Um, so for the craft today, this is what we will be making, and it's got several different parts to it that we're going to work on together. But our supply list for today would be, um, you're going to need several sheets of construction paper. Now, mine is a little bit bigger to showcase what, what I've done, but you can actually um, do this on a smaller scale. So if you, these are larger pieces of construction paper, you can use regular construction paper, work, work just fine, just do a smaller scale. But I have three different pieces. I'm using, using one, um, I'm choosing one color for my background. And then I've picked two that I'm going to use for my background colors. Now, you may choose not to do a background or you may choose to do multicolors. It doesn't matter, um, but that's how I'm doing mine. So you at least need one for your background. You'll also need additional pieces of um, white paper. Now, uh, this is just a uh, cardstock. You can use computer paper or a thicker, like cons white construction paper. Um, you're going to need some crayons. Now, the crayons are going to be to make the pumpkin. So, whatever color you want your pumpkin to be. Um, I did. I'm going to be doing mine in traditional orange, red, orange, yellows, uh, and brown. Um, and I'm also I've grabbed a green crayon for the stem. But again, it's all your artistic choice, so if you choose to, you can do a multicolored pumpkin. Some people um, are decorating with white pumpkins and putting like cream colors with it. You can do teal um, pumpkins uh, for autism. So there's all sorts of different pumpkins that you can do. They don't have to be traditional, they can be artistic. Um, but the colors that I'm choosing for my crayons will be traditional. So whatever colors you want to use is what color crayons you'll want. You'll also need black uh, watercolor um, or a, a like a tempera paint that you've watered down just a little bit um, but for this we'll be using the black watercolor and a paintbrush um, you'll also need to grab some leaves now for the sake of mine I'm actually using um, artificial leaves so if you, you know if you have like a wreath at home or something that you, you know you have uh, fake plants out front or something like that for the fall I just peeled a few of mine off. They, I'm going to be honest though, they don't work as well as uh, real leaves. So what, what you're looking for is leaves that have that veins, those veins in them so that when you press it down and you paint with them and you print with them, you get that really good leaf print. Okay, so for the sake of today I'll be using just artificial leaves, but you will need some sort of leaves, fresh or dry. Um, the color of paint that you want to use to actually print those leaves in mine, I'm using a green, but you can use any color you choose. Um, and then you're going to need glue. I'm using glue stick for my background, and I'm using a liquid glue for my pumpkin, but you could use either or for both. A pair of scissors is something else that you'll need for this. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is I've kind of, because this is a little bit lengthier, I've kind of started off with a basic outline of a pumpkin. I've started kind of shading in some color because that's where the time, the time is most concerning, um, is when you start coloring. So I'm gonna grab my crayons here and I've, I've started, um, and what I'm gonna do is just color in my pumpkin now. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use lots of different colors, and I'm not going to spend as much time on this one as I did with that one, but you can see that you can spend a little or a lot you can use lots of different colors you can just if you want a basic orange pumpkin that's fine um, but you don't need to press really hard you don't need to fill it in completely kind of give you an overall idea here. Okay, so here's kind of a basic rendering of a pumpkin. Again, you can put more time into it, you can add more detail. And I'm also going to add in my, uh, my stem and my leaves here. So you want to make sure 
uh, to add those sorts of things in with your pumpkin, like the vine that's attached in the pumpkin patch, okay? So you can see how I, I did that. Usually, sometimes they'll bend and, and twist and they might leave like a circle in there where it kind of weaves in and out. So then the next step I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, um, actually the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over it so that I can get my watercolor. So I've just got um, water in my cup and I'm taking my black watercolor and we've done this watercolor resist before if you've joined me in some of our other sessions we've done this it's called uh, resist and the reason why it's called resist is because all you're doing is you're taking watercolor which the base is water right with a little bit of pigment of black and you're going over wax which is basically oil and if you know anything about science and you've done experiments, you know that oil and water do not mix, right? So they resist. So that wax crayon that you've put down, that uh, design of your pumpkin, is going to create a resist. However, in those white spots behind your pumpkin that you didn't color boldly, where there was paper, that's where your watercolor is really going to grab. And when you do that, in this dries, you can see how it makes the, the wax crayon really pop, okay? Now, I'm going to, I'm doing kind of the quick version, but normally you would allow this to dry. And then you're gonna just cut it out. Now, watercolor is one of those things that do not stain. So if, if you also want to do the quick version, it's okay. You'll get a little bit of that, that black on your fingers, but it's not going to stain anything. It will wash out. Okay, so I'm going to put my pumpkin aside. Just let it sit and dry for a little bit while I move on to the next section. And the next part is going to be my leaf prints. Now, again, you can use any leaves that you have uh, at home. And for this, I'm actually, uh, you might need a little plate or something to squeeze your paint. I'm actually going to just squeeze a little bit here on my palette. And then I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to brush the paint onto these leaves. Now the reason why the artificial leaves really don't work as well is because they're almost made out of a fabric. And that fabric absorbs that paint really quickly so it doesn't print as well. That's just, that's the honest truth. Real leaves that you find outside, honestly it's more fun just because you get to go outside and you get to find that your own leaves, but it also will give you a more uh, natural print. So I'm going to press this down and you don't have to use a brayer. I'm going to just because I'm using a fabric leaf but you just take your hand and you'll press it down. And you can see that we've got a leaf, okay? Um, some people like a lighter version. They prefer a lighter version. And really, let me teach you something. I'm, I'm applying more paint, but if I wasn't to apply more paint, if I was just leaving it the way that I had it, and I used what was left from the original one and put it back down, you get a lighter print. It's called a ghost print. And a ghost print is just a lighter version of something else. And it's okay if your paint gets around or squeegees around it. You can always take um, like a crayon or something and uh, trace it out to where your leaf was. And you kind of have like an abstract, really cool um, print within your print and around your print and you can cut it out that way. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a perfect print. Okay, so let me wipe my hands off here just a minute. We're going to let this sit and dry while we do our background. Our background is going to be the next one. Okay, so the background color that I chose to go with, let me get this out of the way, is I chose to go with a, um, because this is a Thanksgiving, you kind of see a lot of these sorts of colors around the table. 
Um, another idea you could do is if you didn't want to do a pumpkin, if you feel like, okay, Halloween's over, I really don't want to do the pumpkin, you can do a cornucopia, like the, the cornucopia or gourds, things like that. But I'm taking two other colors um, that match my actual print right now. I've got a little bit of black on that, that's okay. So these are the colors I chose. Again, you can choose any colors. You don't even have to do a background like I did, but these are the ones that I chose. And what I did from that is I just basically took a scissors and cut it up into squares. So you'll see all the little squares that I've got. I didn't measure them out. Um, you can measure them if you choose to, but I didn't. I just kind of kept it irregular. Um, and you can see how they're kind of staggered. You may want a checkerboard design or um, you may want a certain design outside of what I've done. It leaves so much choice, but I'm going to kind of mimic what I did on the first one where I just kind of took my glue stick and I put some random colors back and forth between each other. Some of them I did horizontal, some of them I did vertical. And I just did these all across the entire background to kind of cover the background. So you can see that I'm just kind of staggering it. The glue in the background is just glue stick, so it'll dry clear. It won't get in the way of your design. You won't even see it. But I basically am just filling in And you can see, even as you get towards the bottom, if you don't like how it lines up, it can go off the page. You can cut it a little bit shorter and line it up on the bottom. So you see how I did that with little, little areas right here that didn't quite fit. You can do whatever you want, okay? I like to really leave it open so that you have as much choice as you want. And it also, you know, it'll then depend on the materials that you have as well because not everybody has the same materials at home and you can't always go out and buy every little thing on the supply list. So I'm just getting started on this one, but I am just wanted to show you how to get started on the background. I added a little pizzazz to each of those by just putting, just basically taking a crayon or a Sharpie and outlining the square. Just kind of give it an extra little pattern. So you can see how I did that. Very similar to this one. And on this one, I actually only did the green squares. Instead of doing all of them, I just did the green squares. But you, again, you could do whatever you want. So then the next step that I would do is I would actually take my leaves, and hopefully at this moment they would be uh, dried. I'm going to cut the one out that printed better for mine. It's okay to leave the space around it. Some people don't like that white space, but if that bothers you, you can even print on a colored piece of paper. So if you don't like the white background on your leaves, you could take a light green or a light brown and print that way, and then put green paint on your paper so that you actually have a background. Okay, so I'm gonna cut one out. And then my last step is actually going to be to assemble it. And so for this, because this is a larger piece, I'm actually going to take my liquid glue and I'm going to squeeze the liquid glue all over there. And once I had my entire background filled, I would lay my pumpkin where I wanted it, press it down, and before it dried, just so I knew exactly where my leaf was going to go, I put those last. You could put those first to put your glue your pumpkin over it, but I wanted to actually know exactly where I was going to be putting my leaves. So as it's still wet, I kind of leave it where I can press it where I want it. So this is just one example of one leaf. Again, on this one I did multiple leaves. You could do multiple colored leaves. Um, there's, there's a lot of different choices that you could do. I get all my edges glued down. And this is a different rendition, but basically it's the exact same project. So there you have, it's a, it's multi 
Um, there's different parts to this as far as uh, crayon and ink and uh, collage even really with the background and printing. So there's four parts to it and all the parts um, create one beautiful piece for Thanksgiving. So um, I hope that you guys have a wonderful holiday and I'll see you next month um, for a really cool project. Thanks.